What's up guys, Rob Samuels here, I hope you guys are good. So today's video has changed. My intention this morning was to film something a little bit different. I actually had a couple of ideas. I was thinking about doing the office tour that I've talked about. I was thinking about doing something to do with mobile phone photography. But earlier on, I put something out on my Instagram and Twitter about a potential Q&A that I had coming up. In fact, I put this up right here. And the response to that was huge. Like within about 20 minutes, I had like 20 questions coming through to me. The plan was to do that Q&A video in maybe like a, a week or two. But I thought, you know what, I've got loads of questions. Um, I don't want to leave you guys hanging on for no reason. So the idea is that we're going to do that Q&A video today. So we're going to make it a bit different. I thought we'll get out and about and we'll move around a little bit rather than just sitting in here. Um, this office tour is coming soon, but you guys don't want to see me sitting in here all day every day um, we'll do a couple of the questions in here but we'll move around a little bit as we go anyway hope it's gonna be a good video I'm sure it will be let's get into it so as I said guys I put that question out on my Instagram page I only put it on one of them I think I put it on my at Rob Samuel sport page I put it on my Twitter as well if you guys didn't see it, it might be because you're not following me on Instagram or Twitter. You should be. Go check me out. My Instagram page specifically where I put this one, as I said, at Rob Samble Sport. There's two others as well, though. You can find me at Rob Samble's Photo and at Scorchers Photog as well. You can also find me on Twitter, at Rob Samble's Photo on Twitter. Go check those out, guys. I mean, I put some behind-the-scenes stuff on there. You can also see a load of the photos that I take in, in various places, which are on there, too. Go have a look, follow along, because my plan will be, if this video is successful and you guys like this, we'll maybe do one of these kind of once a month or something. So keep an eye out on those social media channels, because that's where you will find it. Um, hopefully you're going to enjoy this video. If you do, please do whack a like, hit that um, thumbs up button, smash it like you mean it. If you're new around here, please do think about subscribing. Loads more videos like this to come, and loads more videos already on my channel that you might enjoy. So do think about subscribing if you haven't already. So look, before we have a chat and, and, and answer some of these questions, I think we need a hot drink. So if you guys haven't got one, go get one, go make yourself a tea or coffee something. I'm going to, let's go downstairs and we can start looking at some questions. Let's go. Cool, so we're in the kitchen. Got my Chemex, made some coffee already, which is nice. I'm gonna get this on the go. In my Fulham mug, of course. And let's go sit next door and let's look at some questions. There we go guys, we're in the living room, it's a lot better, everything's better with a bit of coffee. Not too much anyway. <laughs> um, so, so look, as I said, I put the questions on Instagram um, and Twitter, I got some through from each, um, in fact one person emailed me a question too, um, and I'm literally going to kind of go through and, 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 and answer them as we go. In the living room right now, some of my other photographic um, passions behind me actually here, um, some of my landscape stuff, um, this one is in Mallorca, I actually did a video about taking this photo, if you haven't seen that, in fact I'll, I'll link it here, go check that out, that's quite a cool video if you like to see something different about some landscape photography. Uh, Grand Canyon, there's one of Venice further down the wall which you guys can't see, in fact come on let's, let's show you the one of Venice, that's the one of Venice up there. Um, it's something which I do a lot of bit of landscape photography now, I quite enjoy it, it's something a bit different. Um, I've done a couple of little, little videos about it here and there. Um, but nothing, nothing too much. So look, let's get straight into these questions. Okay guys, so the first question that we have got, um, in fact I'll link the questions on the screen, so you know, I'll, I'll put your Instagram handles and stuff, um, you know, hopefully you guys will be cool with that, you probably wouldn't have pinged me a question if you, um, if you were upset about that, so, so I'm sure it'll be okay. First question came from Aiden Woods 23 um, asking, uh, do you shoot RAW or JPEG for sports photography? Good question. The answer is that I shoot JPEG for sports photography. Now, um, that's not to say that JPEG is the best thing to shoot normally. For a load of stuff, I'll shoot RAW. So, for example, I'll shoot um, all my landscape stuffs in RAW. If ever I go and do an a, a events or something like that, I do those in RAW. The only reason that I shoot sports in JPEG is really just the speed of processing the images. Um, they're quicker to um, to ingest um, into my laptop. Um, they're quicker to tweak and go through and do the editing process, which is actually a very simple editing process for sports. You don't do a huge amount with them. 
um, they're just easier to use, quicker to use, smaller files, um, and especially when I'm working to a deadline, um, I, I shoot in, in uh, JPEG just so that I can use the images and process them quicker. If I was shooting something like, um, perhaps I was doing portraits or something for a, for a sports team or something like that, I might shoot those in RAW because I've got time then to go and process them properly. And in reality, you can do more post-processing with a raw image. Um, well, yeah, look, in, in very simple terms, yeah, yeah you can. Um, you know, it's not about going into the detail there now. But that's why I shoot JPEG um, for my sports work. Um, pr pretty much always JPEG for sports. Pretty much always raw for just about everything else. I hope that answers the question, Aiden. Let's have a look. Next question. The next question came from um, J J S Saltash. J Saltash. Sorry, I'm probably saying that wrong, but I'll put it right here on the screen for you guys. Um, what was your first paying photography job? Great question. Um, I suppose it depends a little bit on what you count, because um, my first like little jobs that I got money for were were not kind of jobs in my own right. They were like assisting people. Um, I assisted a friend of mine actually on a wedding, just helping him do some stuff here and there. Um, I I uh, did a couple of jobs where I did the job in like return for services almost so um, like I did an air show where I did the job in return for like some hospitality tickets for my family because it's an air show that they like to go and see. Uh, my first actual job getting paid in my own right. Um, I believe it was a 5k run that I did. It was with an agency that I, I still do some work with now, um, Epic Action Images. In fact, I still do a fair few bits with them. Um, you, you see them on some of my Instagram stuff. Um, doing, I think it was a 5k run over near, I can't remember exactly where, near sort of Box Hill somewhere, something like that. That was my first um, paid photography job where I just got paid you know, a fee to me to go and shoot that event. That was my first job. Good type of thing to start with because fairly simple, lots of repetition, the runners come through. Um, you know gives you a chance to, to really practice and hone your skills so it was a cool job I appreciate them giving me a chance and I still work with them now so yeah cool that was my first one okay guys we've moved again we're out here in my conservatory now so um, next uh, question was is sports photography your main job um, good question and I know a few people have wondered about that before um, it's it the, the, look, the simple answer is it's one of my jobs um, I, I try to diversify my income a little bit um, I, I get my photography income comes from quite a few different places uh, a big chunk of that's sports though I do a lot of pro sports work um, I also do another job that is non photography related to um, I also do some online um, trading and stuff so I try to diversify my income um, as much as I possibly can so sports photography isn't my main job as such but it is one of my main jobs definitely something which takes a lot of my time something which I dedicate a lot of time to um, photography in general sports everything else including making these videos and the next question came from a limestone image. What would you recommend for a beginner in sports photography in 2019? Um, what would I recommend? I think I would recommend, um, I guess in two bits really, gear wise, I would watch my last video I put up um, and get yourself started off with the basics. Don't worry too much about the high end gear that everyone will tell you you have to get for sports photography. Um, and in terms of where to start, Really, um, exactly what, what I did, I suppose. Um, I researched it a hell of a lot. I followed sports photographers on Twitter, on Instagram. I looked at their work. I went on forums. I found sports photographers' blogs. Um, I looked at a couple of other bits on YouTube to do with sports photography, although there's not that much of it, which is part of why I started doing this. Um, and, and just look it up as much as you can. Try and learn as much as you can. Take photos. Practice, 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 practice. And then look at those photos you take. And then look at the pros or the guys who you think are good and see what the difference is. You know, is it that they're always showing people's faces? The balls are always in the shot. Their horizons are level. All those kind of things that beginners often struggle with a little bit. And I've done a video on this as well, actually. I did one um, like how to improve your photography instantly, five tips or something like that. Um, that's probably quite a good one. Those, those genuinely are probably the biggest tips that I would give a beginner. So go check those out. 
And the next question came uh, from H. Uh, Kerai. Kerai, am I saying that right? Again, it's on the screen right here. Um, how would you approach your next steps in sports photography research? Um, good question. I think probably actually relates very similar to, to the previous question right there. I would keep on um, do, doing what I do. I'm always looking at other people's work. I'm always looking at the top guys, um, you know, and, and their work that they put out on their websites or on Instagram or various other places. I take inspiration from that. I look for new ideas, um, things that I see. You guys know I shoot a lot of basketball. I follow almost probably all the NBA photographers on Instagram. Um, you know, a couple of really great ones on there. Um, you know, and I look at what they do. I get inspiration from them. I um, I see different angles they they've used, and I thought, oh, I could I could try that angle. And sometimes I'll interact with them a bit. I'll ping them questions here and there on Twitter or Instagram, just like you guys have done with me today. Um, and I try to get as much advice as I can. I chat to people. I'm the first to admit that at a lot of the sports events I go to, there's a lot of photographers there who are a hell of a lot better than me. And um, you know, and I'll chat to some of those guys. I'll chat to my colleagues at the agency I work with, and and, and get ideas all the time. And and I think that's the answer. Just keep on looking. Um, accept that there's pretty much always going to be someone better than you, and that probably means that you can learn something from that person and and keep on doing it. Next question was from um, Sports uh, Photography, which um, again on the screen right here. How do you become a accredited sports photographer? Um, quite a general question, I guess. A bit tricky to answer because it would depend tremendously depending on the type of event you're trying to do. But if it's a um, lower level event, normally something you can apply for yourself and or you can just put yourself in to try to apply for so for example a lot of the basketball stuff i do um if i'm doing you know like local events or local sports or university things anything like that i just get in touch with them myself and i arrange it um, and i get their approval if it's some bigger events like some of the football and stuff i do um i wouldn't get accepted myself for, for accreditation so so my agency does that for me um and they get accreditation because they've got the relevant license and everything else to be able to shoot that sports so the the accreditation in theory actually sits with them um and then they name me on it and they send me to, to go there so it depends a bit on the event but you've just got to, um, you know, look at the process for the particular event you're trying to shoot um, and find out what you need to do to, to be able to get accredited to shoot it. I know that's not the most detailed answer, um, but I hope that helps a little bit. It's very hard to answer because it depends a lot on the event you're trying to shoot. Thank you for the question. Okay, so I moved us back up to the office for the next next, que next question. Um, so the next question is, um, what's the most memorable moment, event or photo you've done so far and why? Really good question. Really good question. Now, God, whether I can pick one, I, I don't know. I think um, the first time that I did some of the bigger events, like the first time I shot England at Wembley, um, was, was pretty cool. Um, the first time I shot... Um, Fulham at Craven Cottage because I think you guys know that's that's my team I support Fulham as, as well as working for them doing the academy stuff um, in fact I've got some stay there so some of this stuff I have in the shelves in the back so my first um, the program for my first ever England game um, that's the program for my first ever Fulham game which I've got in the back here that's a bit of a teaser for when I do the office tour, but um, the first time I did those events was was really cool um, and a hell of an experience, so certainly very memorable. Um, I did a whole blog around that England game, actually, a written blog on my website, um, which I'll put, I'll put the link in the description for that if you guys want to check that out. Um, I think probably the most memorable event I've done, though, um, you guys know I do a lot of basketball. Um, I'm a big basketball fan. I've played basketball since I was like 12 years old. So I think for me the most memorable event was the first time I shot the NBA um, at the O2 in London, which was, I've done the NBA twice now, um, and that was in January 2018 was the first time I did that. And that probably was the most memorable, um, most memorable one. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of moments... I've worked with Surrey Scorchers for a long, long time, um, you know, and, and when you work with a club for a long period of time, you build that affiliation. I'll admit I wasn't necessarily a Surrey Scorchers fan when I first started working with them, but I certainly am now because um, you build that affiliation with the players. So when I was with them on the weekend when they won um, the Basketball All-Stars event at the Copper Box in London, 
um, that was the most memorable moment, I think, because the celebration, like everyone rushed the court, like I was right there with them, I was rushing the court in the middle of the celebration, trying to pop off photos at the same time, so that's probably the most memorable moment. Um, I'll put a couple of photos in from that um, uh, right now. So there you go, that's probably the most memorable moment. Memorable photo, I, I don't know. I think probably my personal most memorable photo is the photo of Venice, which um, you guys saw briefly on the wall downstairs, purely because I put a lot of work into getting that photo. You know, I researched the, the spot and the place to get it from. I got up at 5.30 in the morning, I walked across the city of Venice, um, you know, stood there on the bridge and, you know, did a whole lot of work went into that photo. So that's probably the most memorable photo for me, and that's been on the wall of our home for, for quite a while, so I guess that's probably my most memorable photo specifically. I apologise that it's not a sports photo, but yeah, that was, um, that was a cool one. Okay, next question. I've actually picked a second one from, from um, someone who has already had a question. That was um, H. Karai, because I thought it was a good question. And, and it was, what are the things you didn't know um, that you didn't know? So, what, what are the first things you didn't know um, when you first started? And I suppose the things I didn't know um, about actually taking photographs, the things I didn't know were, I guess, the basics, right? Like, I, I didn't get shutter speed and aperture and stuff like that and I, I just learnt it all. You know, I learnt pretty quick that for sports photos you need fast shutter speeds, which normally then in turn means you need, um, uh, you know, larger apertures or, or lower apertures in terms of the number um, to, to be able to get those photos. Um, I had no idea what goes into sports photography in terms of like the laptop work and sending images and all that kind of stuff. You know, I had no idea the work that goes into taking a sports photo and then getting it sent out somewhere within two minutes. Um, no idea. I was oblivious to all that kind of stuff. Um, and I guess it goes back to, to what I've said earlier about researching. And I learned all that stuff through researching it. When I turned up to do my first event, I knew what I had to do because I'd researched it loads and asked questions and, and watched videos and tutorials and gone on chat rooms and stuff like that. You guys are in the, in the UK, there's a good um, photography website called Talk Photography, I'll link it in the description. Uh, in the States there's a good one I go on, Fred Miranda, check that one out too, I, I go on both of those quite a bit. Um, so have a look at those those chat rooms for photography, I find those, those, those pretty cool. Um, in terms of... Um, you know, anything else I didn't know, I, I guess it was everything, because I'm very self-taught, right? I've got um, a good friend of mine who's an amazing photographer, um, Tony, um, I learned a load from him to start with. I've learned lots from um, from the guys who I work with in the agency. There's a guy called Gary who, who runs Frozen in Motion, I learned a lot from him as well. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't know anything, I guess, and I set out to try to learn it all as quickly as I possibly could. Thank you for the question, the two questions, good questions. Right, you know what, I think for the last few questions we need to go somewhere totally different. Let's go outside, it's been hot in the UK last few days, um, you guys who, who've been in the UK will know. Um, let's go outside, let's get some more coffee as well and, and let's go somewhere else. Okay, <laughs> so it seems as though the sun has kind of gone. It's not so sunny today but it doesn't matter, it's nice out here anyway and this is where we're going to finish up the video. So the next question is from Hayden and said, what's the best sport to photograph and why? Now, I suppose it, it depends a little bit on what you're basing it on. But for me personally, my favorite sport to photograph is basketball. Um, why? Because uh, it's challenging, it's really fast paced. It's also a sport which I play, so I, and I've played you know, for, for years, so I know it really well. And I think that helps because it helps you to be better at doing it. You can anticipate what's going to happen. Um, you know, you can guess what's coming next. Uh, plus it's indoors, which means even if it's a bit colder, like right now, uh, there's potential that it might rain, like right now. It doesn't matter, you're indoors, you know, it's year round um, and that's great. So for me, basketball is my favourite one, definitely. And I think probably the last question for today um, comes from Slim Shoddy, um, Toyin, um, who, who I know, he's on the same circuit as me and we're, we're often at the same games. So, so he probably kind of knows the answer to this question as well as I do. And that's, can you make a full-time living 
from photographing a pro sport such as football? Now, the answer is yep, of course you can, because people do. There are people out there working full-time jobs just photographing something like football. Of course, those jobs aren't, you know, that often. They might be few and far between. For example, the Premier League teams will, um, you know, have, have people who... Um, you know, work for them full time, photographing their training, their games, everything. So yeah, of course you can, but it's not easy. If you wanted to be out there just photographing football, like on spec, like turning up and, and shooting on spec, if your images get used, then look, that'd be a lot harder. Um, and would you better earn a full time wage from that? Maybe not. But the way that you then turn that into a full-time wage is you shoot lots of other different things related to sports too. Personally, I shoot university sports, school sports events, um, all different sports, football, netball, basketball, rugby, all different stuff. Um, and, and that's what you've got to do um, until, I guess, you push forward and you grow and you grow and you get better and better. And you're lucky enough that perhaps you do pick up one of those full-time jobs. Because some people have to, the best people will. Um, and nothing's impossible, right? you just got to keep pushing towards it. I hope that answers the question. Go check out Slim's um, Instagram page, guys. Um, he's a great sports photographer himself. Go check out his stuff. Um, I'll, I'll link to him right here. And I guess that just about finishes up today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit that thumbs button. Smash that like button like you mean it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Loads more videos like this to come. And I thought I'd leave you with a little gadget I bought just recently. Something which is going to feature on the channel soon. I'm going to do a video all about my first time using it. Um, check it out, we're right over here.